Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome everyone to our worship service this morning, both those of you who are in our sanctuary and those of you watching online. We are gathered as the people of God to worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I want to emphasize some of the announcements in our bulletin and then a few that are not. The first one is that Hurricane Ida passed through the Northeast just before Labor Day, and one of our RE churches in New Jersey was very adversely affected by it, and that is Emmanuel RE Church in Somerville. And so they were bombarded with 10 inches of rain, and because uh, Emmanuel Church participates in a food assistance ministry called Feeding Hands, due to the rain, a van, two trucks, and multiple refrigerators and freezers, and tons of food were lost. Our missions committee has uh, agreed to send them a gift, but I also want to open it up to the rest of the congregation. If you want to help with the relief effort, please send it to Motion 2, and in the, in, in the bulletin is the name of the church, the, their address, and to market pantry relief. And for the good uh, well-being of our treasurer, send it directly to Emanuel Church, Somerville, and we would appreciate that. I'm going to repeat an announcement from last week in regard to mask wearing. Please wear a mask if you feel most safe in wearing a mask, or if you have underlying health conditions, or if you're unvaccinated, please wear a mask. I'd like to congratulate Scott and Ginny Applebaum on the birth of their first grandchild, Arthur Adler. <clears throat> Arthur is the son of Kristen and Danny Adler and was born last Sunday, Sunday, September the 12th. So congratulations, Scott and Ginny. There are a number of additional prayer requests that came in just this weekend, so let me briefly go through them. They're not in the bulletin, but they will appear in next week's. So John Dykes, who is a member of St. Stephen's Church, sent in two. His mother, Ginger Dykes, is suffering from stage four lung cancer. So please keep Ginger Dykes in your prayer. Also, John Dykes' brother-in-law, Joe Trebs Jr., is suffering from thyroid cancer. So please keep Joe Trebs Jr. in your prayers. Also, a number, number of people, I realize, this weekend are suffering from COVID. Uh, two of uh, Mark and Christina Speck, Mark is an Ori minister, two of his children, Oksana and Laura Speck, have COVID. Also, Greg Miller, who is an Ori minister in, in Pittsburgh, he has been hospitalized with uh, COVID. And also, the friend of my family, uh, Steve is his first name. He's suffering from COVID. And our last unannounced uh, prayer request is Steve Hoffman, my brother-in-law, is suffering from severe pain from kidney stones. So keep my brother-in-law, Steve, in your prayers. So this, uh, this morning after the worship service, is our, we're just beginning this fall monthly coffee hour. So I wrote my notes, if you like either a sweet tooth or sweet fellowship, please stick around for coffee hour following our worship service, and that's going to be in the parlor. The deadline for the October newsletter is this Tuesday, September 21st. If you want to submit an article, please have it in by this Tuesday. You have in your bulletin inserts uh, free concerts that are coming up in this fall. Uh, and if you want an additional flyer to give to a friend to invite them, they're available on the table in the narthex. At this time, Renata Buttram has an announcement to make. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to share some information with you. As Pastor said, we are having the fellowship hour today immediately following the service. So we have some snacks, coffee, we'll have hot water for tea. Uh, so instead of standing in the narthex or the parking lot, why don't you come stand in the parlor or have a seat and just enjoy conversation and fellowship with one another. We're gonna try to do this um, once a month from here on out. So it's kind of building on what we did with the church picnics and just having that opportunity. Uh, 
Second is our hiking group. And I say the word hiking, but don't let that scare you. It's not gonna be overly vigorous. We're going to have a hiking group that meets once a month, um, not every month, but during the months of September, October, November, and then again, March, April, May, June. Um, and the, the idea is to go out and continue uh, fellowshipping with one another, enjoying God's creation, and just spending time. The hikes that we pick will be, uh, the first ones here are gonna be pretty local. Um, they're gonna be a duration of maybe an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half, and I'm gonna select all ones that are rated easy. So don't worry that they're gonna be too, too hard. And then after that, we'll kinda go with what the group wants to do moving forward, how far distance they might like to go, how strenuous they might like the hikes to be. So we'll really have that be decided by the participants. So um, our first hike is next Sunday, right after church. So we're gonna do a very familiar area here to most in Catonsville. We're just gonna do the trolley trail. Keep it simple, keep it local. Um, we'll start at the uh, Edmondson, uh, the end of Edmondson, that entrance, walk all the way down to Old EC, and then walk, it's an in and out, back and out. So uh, it should maybe take about an hour, an hour and a half, hour, an hour and a half, depending on our pace. So I hope you are able to join us. Just bring your, your hiking shoes, or your tennis shoes. Thanks. Our call to worship comes from Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Let us stand together as we sing the hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Our worship service continues with the order of Holy Communion found on page 85 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, 
Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Almighty Lord and everlasting God, vouchsafe, we beseech thee, to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments that through thy most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord God, we beg you, let your continual pity cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your succor, preserve it evermore by your help and goodness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have made your people a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, that we may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We implore your mercy on our world that you would deliver us from the ravages and presence of this worldwide pandemic. We pray especially, dear Lord, for Oksana, Lars, Christine, Steve, and, and Greg. Be with them, uphold them, grant them healing and peace of mind. We, we pray also, dear Lord, for your blessings upon the staff, faculty, and students of Reformed Episcopal Seminary in Bluebell, Pennsylvania, and Cummins Theological Seminary in Somerville, South Carolina. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, with the spirit of wisdom and holy reverence for you as they seek to serve you and share the message of your redeeming love and your holy word. Strengthen them to do your will in living out and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray for the persecuted church throughout the world. Grant unto them godly courage and faithfulness to your word and gospel. We pray also, dear Lord, for those suffering from cancer, from Patty, Warren, Ginger, Joe, and Stephanie. Bring healing to them if it be your will, and have mercy on them as they go through this baptism of suffering. Our Heavenly Father, we also pray for those who are suffering from various other health issues. We remember in prayer, especially, dear Lord, for Renata, Terry, Dan, Donna, Denise, Ron, Walter, Doris, Preston, Kathy, Mary Claire, Steve, Dorothy, Ernie, Hunter, Carolyn, and Michael. Grant to them your merciful presence and provide for their needs spiritually and physically. We also pray for Bobby, Tim, Shirley, Harvey, Bill and Betty, and Ed, who are in the process of recovering from surgery, illness, or accident. Be present with them. Grant them patience and perseverance in their trust in you. We also pray for your peace and comfort for those who have lost loved ones, especially for the Morseberger family and the passing of their nephews, Anthony and Zachary, and their niece, Julie, and for the Chano Mundra family and the passing of Johnny. These things we beg through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament lesson this morning is Isaiah chapter 12. Then you will say on that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for although you were angry with me, 
Your anger is turned away, and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. Therefore, you will joyously draw water from the springs of salvation. And in that day, you will say, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Make them remember that his name is exalted. Praise the Lord in song, for he has done excellent things. Let this be known throughout the earth. Cry aloud and shout for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Here ends the reading of the Old Testament lesson. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson this morning is Ephesians chapter 3, beginning at the 13th verse. Therefore I ask you not to lose heart at my tribulations on your behalf, for they are your glory. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Here ends the reading of the epistle lesson. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord found in John chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. And he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he puts forth all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow his voice, follow him because they know his voice. A stranger they simply will not follow, but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus spoke to them, but they did not understand what those things were with which he had been saying to them. Jesus said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and is not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I received from my Father. 
a division occurred again among the Jews because of these words. Many of them were saying, he has a demon and is insane. Why do you listen to him? Others were saying, these are not the sayings of one demon possessed. A demon cannot open the eyes of the blind, can he? This is the holy gospel of our Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Let us confess our faith in the words of a Nicene Creed as we confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us remain standing as we praise our God with the singing of the praise song, See His Love. Perfect and blameless life, given as sacrifice. See him there, all in the name of love, broken yet glorious, all for the sake of us. This is Jesus in his glory. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer, in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Of all the pictures which you have seen of Jesus, whether paintings, pictures of Jesus in a children's Bible, or in a children's Bible story book, what is at the top of the list in your mind at this moment? How is Jesus being portrayed? In other words, what is the theme being portrayed in that picture, or what biblical story in the life of Christ is being betrayed, portrayed? Is Jesus blessing the children? Jesus healing a blind man? Jesus feeding the 5,000? Jesus walking on the water. In the house I grew up in, in my early childhood, there was a picture of Jesus with a lamb on his shoulder, obviously fitting what we just read about, Jesus the Good Shepherd. Later on, I would say somewhere around my high school, college years, mom and dad replaced that with a big painting in the living room painting of Jesus walking along the road to Emmaus with his two disciples after his resurrection. But I have to say, of all the children's Bible story books and children's Bibles that I've looked at pictures of Jesus, it's that first picture in my childhood of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. In John 10, the gospel lesson for this morning, we have this teaching from Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And as I make my points this morning, the dominant theme of Jesus as the Good Shepherd is that he is God. He is God. Jesus says he is the Good Shepherd in these words in John 10, 7 through 11. Jesus said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. He will go in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus says about himself that he is the good shepherd and he is the doer of the sheep. John Chrysostom, a bishop in the 4th century, said that the doer in this passage refers to Jesus himself and to the scriptures which reveal Jesus as the way to life and salvation. The written word of God points to Jesus as the eternal word, the word who became flesh. Jesus, truly God and truly man. And as we have read in John 10, these claims of Jesus to be the good shepherd, we must realize that certainly the words of Psalm 23 is behind Jesus' claim to be the good shepherd. And so if we keep in mind these words of Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. The word Lord is, in English translations, accurately translated capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. When it's capitalized like that, it's a strong reference of the Lord God Almighty, Jehovah, is my shepherd. When Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, Jesus is saying, I am Jehovah God. I am the Jehovah of Psalm 23. And so the Lord is our shepherd, and all who trust in Jesus as the Lord God are his sheep. The predominant truth about sheep is that they are weakless, weak, I'll get there, weak, helpless, and vulnerable. And also, one of the more uncomplimentary aspects of sheep is that they are easily led astray and not aware of danger. I don't mean to insult any one of us, but sheep are dumb. They just are. They don't recognize danger around them. They don't know where to get good food. They'll eat thorns and thistles as well as grass. They're just kind of a little dumb. <laughs> and that's a predominant picture of us. 
In this vein, Isaiah 53, 6 says this, All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. And Isaiah 53 is talking about Jesus. Jesus said he laid down his life for the sheep, and he did this by dying on the cross for our sins. John 10, 9 and 10 speaks of those who came before Christ who were robbers and thieves. In the first century, there were at least two men who came before Jesus who claimed to be Messiah. And they attempted to lead a band of Jewish soldiers to overthrow Rome. And they were unsuccessful in their coup d'etat. And they were false messiahs, false prophets. And there were also a number of men who came after the time of Christ during the first century and also made claims that they were the Christ. And so our Lord Jesus is warning of the danger of these false teachers and the danger of those who follow after them in their falsehood, error, and deceit. So Jesus, in essence, is saying, beware of the wolves, beware of the dogs who seek to devour the sheep. In fact, in John 10.10, the ultimate thief is the devil who spreads lies, false teaching, and heresy among the people of God by contradicting and denying these fundamental truths that Jesus is fully God, fully man, yet without sin trying to lure both leaders and people in the church away from Jesus as Lord and Savior. The life that Jesus gives, this abundant life, is living in God's grace and forgiveness through faith in his name, which can be experienced in this life, while the fullness of abundant life awaits us in God's eternal kingdom in heaven. Jesus is the good shepherd. Let us keep in mind, that means he's God. He's worthy of our worship and service. The second point is that Jesus says he has the power to lay down his life and then to take it up again. John 10, 17 and 18 says this, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it, up, take it again. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I receive from my Father. So Jesus' words about him laying down his life by his own initiative and the power to take it up again points to Christ's death and resurrection. Jesus voluntarily laid down his life by dying on the cross for our sins. No one took his life from him. You may think that Roman soldiers or Pontius Pilate or the Jewish leaders took Jesus' life from him. That's false. He laid down his life on his own accord. No one took it from him. He is not the helpless, weak little Jesus who had his life ripped from him. He is the Lord God Almighty who of his own accord laid down his life for you and me that we might have eternal life. So he is not a helpless victim. He gave his life for us. He did that by his own authority. And again, that is a sign that he is God. You and me don't decide when we're going to die. In that sense, we are helpless victims. But Jesus knew the hour. He was sent into the world by God the Father, and he laid down his life voluntarily. And not only does he have the authority to lay down his life, he also has the authority to raise it again. Again, only God has the authority of life and death and of life and resurrection. Jesus claims to be that because he's God. Christ submitted to the will of his heavenly Father as he drank the bitter cup of his suffering on the cross of Calvary. While Jesus does show that he is God and has the authority to both lay down his life and to be raised on the third day, 
he has an eternal relationship with God the Father. And as he yields to the foreordained path and calling to redeem sinners. So Jesus is equal to God the Father, and yet he submits to God the Father. Okay, 20th century Christians, submission is not a dirty word. Jesus did it. I still remember the time I was doing premarital counseling back in New Jersey, and the wife-to-be looked at me and said, I don't submit, only dogs submit. I thought to myself, boy, are we going to be in for fun here, aren't we? Jesus submitted. Even though he was equal to God the Father, he submitted to the plan of his Father. That brings me to my third point. Jesus, as the good shepherd, embraces both Jews and Gentiles. John 10, 14 through 16 says this, I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also. And they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. The other sheep Jesus is talking about is us, the goyim, the nations, the Gentiles, who will be brought into the flock with the believing Jews under the one shepherd, Jesus Christ. This shows that through faith in Jesus as God and Savior, both believing Jews and believing Gentiles are one church which transcends ethnic and racial lines. Christ's work on earth is to reconcile not only the believer to God, thus healing our relationship with God, but also healing humanity's relationship with each other. This is the work of having one flock under one shepherd, and it is an important part of Christ renewing and transforming following humanity's broken relationship with each other. We must view this work of Christ bringing salvation in our relationship with each other as something which we get a foretaste of in this life, but also awaits a perfected work in the eternal age. But we must do our part in seeking to have just, honorable, in right relationships with one another as a testimony that we truly believe and trust in God. As the Apostle Paul says in Romans 12, 17, and 18, never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. We are one flock under one shepherd. We are one family with God as our Father, Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the husband of his wife, the church. And we are the body of Christ with Jesus as our head. And we need to constantly remind ourselves of this truth and treat one another as members of one spiritual family because that is what we are. When we do so, we are not play-acting. We are one family. So let's act like we are one family. Let us treat one another with respect, not holding grudges against a member of our family, even when we have honest disagreements. Let us commit to agree to disagree in an agreeable, charitable manner. As a nation, and even as churches, we really don't do so well in having civil, charitable conversations, especially when we know at the forefront that we don't agree on a certain issue. We can do better than this, and we must do better than this, especially since we are Christians as one flock under one shepherd. Having Jesus as your shepherd means that as a sheep, you need to hear the voice of our master who will correct us when we have strayed from the path of following him. And all of us take detours. Having Jesus as shepherd means we need to listen to him when he says to us, you have strayed, 
Come back so I can lead you to streams of living water. Come and lie down here so I can feed you with green pastures. Stop eating those stubs and weeds over there. They're not good for you. Eat the green grass and it will nourish you. Christ will lead us by his word to what is good and nourishing for our souls. He will prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He will lead us to the valley of the shadow of death. He promises to do that. Jesus, before he left this earth, said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So let us hear Christ's word and message given to us, that he is the good shepherd who laid down his life for us, dying on the cross for our sins, and who was raised for our justification. Let us trust in Jesus as both God and man, and as our Lord and good shepherd, the one who has bought, brought, and redeemed us by his blood, and has placed us into his family. We are one family. Let us treat one another as one family, not only made in God's image, but bought by the precious blood of Christ. Let us live in the hope and certainty that we have eternal life with Christ in this life and that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have raised your Son from the dead, the shepherd of your sheep, grant us the Holy Spirit that we may hear the voice of our shepherd, Jesus Christ. We may know him who called us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our worship service continues on page 93. Our fellow Christians of other branches of Christ's church and all who love our divine Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in sincerity, are effectually invited to the Lord's table. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice, to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good example that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. You do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and earn love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. 
and make their humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling, as we pray together a general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all you that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul says, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John says, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It's very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy. join me in praying together the prayer of humble access on page 100 of the Book of Common Prayer. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed to his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. 
Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This is my blood of a New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, beloved, for all things have been made ready. start on the outside, the outside looking in, 
This is where grace begins. We were hungry, we were thirsty, with nothing left to give, or the shape that we were in. Just when all hope seemed lost, love opened the door for us. He said, come to the table. Come join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. Come meet this motley crew of misfits, these liars and these thieves. There's no one unwelcome here. So that sin and shame that you've brought with you, you can leave it at the door and let mercy draw you near. So come to the table. Come join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. To the thief and to the doubter, to the hero and the coward, to the prisoner and the soldier, to the young and to the older, all who hunger, all who thirst, all the last and all the first, all the paupers and the princes, all who failed, you've been forgiven. All who dream and all who suffer, all who've loved and lost another, all the chained and all the free, all who follow, all who lead, anyone who's been let down, all the lost you have been found, all who have been labeled right or wrong, to everyone who hears this song. join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. Come to the table. Come to the table. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. 
scars are a sign of grace in our lives and father how you brought us through when deep were the wounds and dark was the night the promise of your love you proved now every battle still to come let this be our song. It is well. It is well. With my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well. With my soul. Weeping may come, remain for a night, but joy will paint the morning sky. You're there in the fast, you're there in the feast, your faithfulness will always shine. Now every blessing still to come, let this be our song. It is well. It is well. With my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well. With my soul. Trust your ways. Trust your name. Trust your name. It is well. It is well with my soul. You lead us through battles. You lead us through battles. You lead us to blessings. You lead us through blessing and you make us fruitful and you make us fruitful in the land of our suffering God it is well it is well with my soul
Trust your way. Trust your name. Trust your name. It is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. Trust your way. Trust your name. Trust your name. It is well. It is well with my soul. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, to have duly received these holy mysteries, but the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thine everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. We most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, to do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us stand together for our closing hymn, Savior again to thy dear name we raise.
let us hear this benediction, the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.